Good morning. Good morning, lovely people, on this um, gorgeous spring day. Um, welcome to your Yoga Solutions Live on Tuesday, the 14th of April 2020. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling well wherever you are. Having a lovely day. And um, yes, let's see. Let's see what we've got today. I think I had a question this morning. Let me just check. Yes, I did, yeah. So, um, uh, what is your take? So, who's this from? Oh, I can't, I can't find out on Facebook. Uh, <clears throat> I'll see afterwards. But, uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, hi, Mark. What is your take on the following statement? Don't try to repair the body. Just learn how to move better. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and, and the person says, um, I do find your view very fresh and anti-fragile, which is an interesting um, description. <clears throat> I kind of know what you mean, yeah, anti-fragile. Yeah, because I'm, uh, um, I'm not in favour of treating the body like it's weak, uh, because it's not. Uh, it's, in, it's an incredible thing. Yeah, you know, Self-repairs, it's... Um, and it's a perfect reflection of, uh, of our attitude to life and ourselves um, in many ways. Um, that's a broad statement, but um, uh, <clears throat> in terms of um, self-healing, it's, that's a, that's a, it's an empowering statement. It's a, it's a useful thing to understand. So um, don't try to repair the body, learn how to move better. <clears throat> As they quote, that I'm asked about. Um, essentially, I, I agree with the sentiment. Um, I, I agree with the idea, uh, just because uh, if you're trying to repair the body, then you're looking at it from the wrong perspective, as in you are looking at it from the outside as a thing that needs repairing by you. And um, that's the... That's kind of uh, contraindicated, basically, because if you if you um, separate yourself from your body in the first place, then that separation is very likely to be the uh, source of the ongoing issue, even if the issue was instigated by something else, um, <clears throat> history, an accident, um, some experience. The thing that keeps it in place is the person separating from their bodies. In, in, uh, and I'm talking about if you're looking for a solution. Uh, the other thing I have, I'm not so keen on in that statement is that um, it implies, because of human nature, it implies that you can't do anything about it. But just learn how to move better is sort of it. Yeah, it's sort of it. But it's missing a trick. It's missing a big trick in that the body does repair. The body self-repairs. And but but it self-repairs if you can give yourself the right conditions, to create the right conditions for the repair to occur. And and um, just learning to just learning how to move better. How do, you do, how do you define that? You know, how, how do you quantify that? How do you qualify that? Um, for some people, moving better will be being more flexible. For some people, moving better will involve believing that they have to strengthen certain muscles. And all of these things are... Um, it's, it's the thinking behind what you're doing that, is actually, that actually leads to the outcome. So if... If by moving better you mean move in ways that cause you less distress, move in ways that feel simpler, easier, uh, and more in conjunction with breathing, less conflicted. And if you then have the wherewithal to um, sort of assess whether, whether it is better or not um, by trying it out in something you might want to do, 
uh, because you know moving better could could involve not doing anything <laughs> you, you just stop yourself from moving if it's if it feels uncom if it feels conflicting and that's uh, you know the don't do it approach which is also sensible to some degree um, I don't know yes I agree with the statement in principle um, but it's missing the value of what happens uh, it's missing the empowerment part uh, the, the reason people want to uh, fix their bodies or repair them is because they want to do, be able to do something about it and saying to someone that is suffering in their bodies and when movement is restricted if you say to them, well, just move better, you're not really giving them anything. So, so uh, anything useful. It's, it's kind of, um, yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a correct principle, but it doesn't, it's, not ne it's not necessarily helping. Um, the how to move better, maybe the person that gave this statement guides people in how to, um, in, in useful ways. But then the, the person that is receiving that guidance will be dependent on this other person's idea of what is, what is good way, you know, what are good ways of moving. Um, the body will repair if you remove conflict in the way that you engage with life. And you can be really quite specific with that, in that if you notice conflict in particular action, which is a reason for doing postures, um, it's sort of exploring ranges of what you can do. And if you, if you come across conflict within that, then setting yourself the task of finding out what better movement is by applying some some sort of principle-based um, shift of intention in your actions. So, you know, uh, what, can I, what can I give an example? Uh, uh, yeah, a uh, good old standard example, Le leg extensions, right? right let's, um, let's get a broader view. So, um, for example, you have people saying, um, I can't, uh, well, they, they try to stretch the hamstrings, right? They try, they try and stretch the hamstrings because they feel tight in the hamstrings. And that idea of my hamstrings are tight and they need stretching is trying to repair the body, uh, trying to fix it. And it leads to uh, a fight, you know, where, where you're sort of trying to stretch muscles uh, with the effort of stretching them. And, uh, and the body will resist because it's very sensible. Um, yeah. So, uh, where, uh, where am I coming from in this? Um, This separate, it's confusing me because, uh, you know, just me, me going into that mindset confuses the hell out of me because it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a bit of a mire that you, um, you either go down and try and explore and try and work out the problems in terms of what muscles are doing what and, you know, but, or you, you zoom out into this <clears throat> trying to move better idea, but with a bit of understanding because it's the thinking that's getting in the way in the first place so if you know if the thought that your hamstrings have to stretch see if i can do it badly enough that's it so that that kicking away feeling if the thought that your hamstrings have to stretch is getting in the way then if you can change your mind as in tune into why the body might be resisting your movement. You know? So there's clearly something conflicting in the attempt to straighten the leg and the conflict is around the hamstring. If you can become the body, you know, tune into 
what is it my body is saying to me? And okay, it's saying don't stretch my hamstrings, but so don't. But you want to find a range of movement. You want to improve your range of movement because that's the originating idea. And if you get into the idea that the body resists movement when there is some sort of conflict between parts of yourself, and my idea is that there is conflict between parts of the body when the person is in conflict also with their environment. And, and, this, and this is a way of measuring it intelligently. So, you know, if I'm busy attacking the hamstrings, that's all I'm doing. But if I'm looking for support from my contact, then this job of straightening the leg becomes secondary. And I start to press, you know, use my ground to feel supported in space. And instantly, I haven't got this heavy leg. Because I'm working with the ground to support my space, uh, to support something up in space, all the efforts down here, really, um, I've taken out half the conflict. Because before, when I wasn't doing that, the, the, the leg was holding itself up with tension around the joints. So then any attempt to straighten the leg would be getting in the way of that. Um, or, or rather, that would be getting in the way of any attempt to straighten the leg. If I can support myself with my earth, and that's quantifiable, I can engage directly with that. I can press down through my folded leg here, I can press down through my hand, I can press down through this thigh on this side, um, so that this leg can, is free to move in space. And if I'm supporting myself with my hand and my arm, rather than trying to do anything to my muscles, then the engagement, especially if it's in harmony with breathing, because um, that's another quantifiable um, way of moving better, is when your movement agrees with breathing, or rather when your breathing agrees with movement. So I'm supporting myself with the ground, with my contact with the ground, if I can breathe that support, then th the action of breathing gets involved in supporting this limb in space. If I can release the breath into that support, then my support travels through my structure, just because of the kind of uh, fluid mechanics of the thing. The support travels through my bones, which means that I have less conflict in the limb. Um, meanwhile, you know, my hamstring is not doing anything. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to um, get in the way of movement anymore because I'm supporting myself with touch through breathing and the release of the breath. So what else is there? There's also my relationship to space. As in, um, I can have a dysfunctional relationship with space, as in it's not somewhere that supports me, it's somewhere that I have to hold up into. You know? um, that, that would be a dysfunctional relationship to space in terms of how the body responds. Because if I have this sort of uh, space doesn't support me feeling, then I have to hold myself up. And I do that, you'll do that with your spine um, and muscles around the joints again. So. And, and the same is true for this leg. If, 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 I'm, if I forget about the ground for a moment, if I feel like um, space has no value to me, no, no, nothing that I can use, then it's just something I have to lift, lift up into and I'm back to the conflict. If, on the other hand, space is somewhere that I occupy and um, engage with, uh, and it won't make sense to, to most people because it's just air, you know, how can you use air? But how do fish use water, you know? That we, we live inside this pressure. Uh, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but there's, a, there's, a, there's plenty of um, external pressure that we are familiar with so we don't feel. But you can decide to engage with it rather than just rush through it. You can decide to engage with it as if it's a surface 
And, you, and we, we tend to do that with the limbs, and we tend to do it with the breath again. So if, instead of holding myself up in space, I engage with space, as if it's a place to support me, so the, place, the space behind me, the space either side of me, and I, if I can do that with the limb as well, uh, with the foot as well, then, and it goes with the way I'm touching the ground with this leg, you see? So, if I'm using the earth, I find some efforts that support me in space. If I use space, I find efforts that support me back through my bones, back to the earth. So I start to get support that travels through my bones from space down. If I do it in conjunction with the arrival of the breath, if I continue to remain in relationship as I release the breath, what happens is from the ground up, I start to get support through my bones, and from space down, I start to get support back through my bones. So the muscles that would have complained and got in the way of what I was doing simply don't. So, so just learn to move better. Um, sure. <laughs> but um, how? How do you do that? It's, um, if, if, if you already move well, or if you, if you do it enough, I suppose, you'll eventually um, come across how to do it well how to move well, but whether you get there and how fast you get there and um, how effective it is will depend on your thinking, on how you, how, what you imagine better to be and how you might imagine sourcing your better movement. You know, what's it supposed to feel like? What's it supposed to, you know, are you supposed to get strong at at pulling on muscles so that they yield and you know allow you to move in the way that you think is better. We, we need some sort of, especially those that need better movement. You know, if if you are in need of better movement, you already have conflicting relationships with yourself. How do we resolve those things? Well, my thing after thirty years is actually you don't do you don't do that to yourself you you work it out by measuring the quality of your engagement with everything around you that's how you measure it or that's how you adjust it rather um, the measurement is in the 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 result so you know if i'm busy if my thinking is busy with stretching the hamstring then the result is nothing if my engagement is with earth and space. I'm not even thinking about what needs stretching. I'm, if I'm with the earth underneath me, with the space all around me as I breathe, and here's the clue, if I can stay with those relationships as I release the breath, that means I'm, I'm supported through my bones throughout a full cycle of the breath. So the thing that actually changes is the choices within my breathing, the choices within how I release the breath to, br to bring me to a place that the arrival of the breath is something that happens kind of concentrically all around me so I feel supported and then the release of the breath is something that happens back towards the center of everything so I can let go through myself and the result is better movement um, so yes, I, I totally agree. <laughs> um, don't try and heal, don't try and repair the body. But I think it's important to understand that the body will repair. Because if, 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 you're, in a, if you're in need of repair, then human nature means that you're going to want to find a solution. If you don't need repair, then you don't need my guidance. Now, if you're perfectly happy in your body, perfectly expressive, there, there's nothing... If your body's not saying anything to you about yourself that is conflicted, then you don't need guidance. You can happily get on with your life being happily embodied. But um, you know, uh, many of us are 
here or um, we turn up for yoga classes or Pilates or whatever it is you do um, because we want to find better relationships because we want to feel better in our bodies and uh, if that's the case there needs to be some sort of useful guidance and 99.9% .9 of current guidance is about what to do to the body and there's the other camp saying uh, you can't do you, you can't work it out and I'm saying I'm right in the, I'm, I'm I'm in the middle of these things saying yes you can uh, you can't you can't do anything to the body but you can work it out as in you can Im you can improve your relationships to the world around you in a real and physical measurable way and the outcome is the body responds in a self-healing kind of way but more importantly the outcome I think more importantly the outcome is that the person learns what it means to be in good relationship that's what's happened for me anyway that's the that's the um, that's the big take home from my yoga is is this um, understanding that um, the, the body is talking to us all the time and these, these niggles, these, these feedback niggles that we have or um, if, you can, if you can notice them they're, they're a direct reflection of what we've got going on you, you know how it is, you know, if, you, if you feel agitated or irritated uh, you're just feeling the emotion but if in that moment you went into your body you would find um, physical ramifications of that of that feeling. The body is telling you exactly what's going on for you on a moment by moment basis. And for me, when I was separate from separate from my body, it was like there was no solution because I was this sort of noise of complication in my head. And yes, my body was complaining. But um, I just thought it was my body that needed fixing, and uh, it was adding to the problem. You know, that's what I thought. But if you can tune into what the body is saying and work out, not by doing anything to the body, but by changing how you relate to things, work out how to soften that noise. It gives the person. It gave me an understanding of my part in my experience. Uh, so it becomes yoga, you know? You know it, it was, it ended up that it was me that changed. And I wasn't trying to change myself. I, I just, it simply happened organically by listening to what the body had to say. And, I, and I'm almost evangelical about it, I suppose, because, um, my originating experience was the, the body was separate and, and the body was causing me problems. And in this shift of perspective, it became the place I turned to for answers. So, and, and so if my body is telling me something, um, it's no longer a complaint. It's a, ah, okay, what's going on here? And I can find out something about myself, about my own actions, about my relationships to life. Not by working it out in my head, but by just going in, in full, total communion with the body, listening to what it's having to say, creating the conditions, the, the, the improved relationships to earth and space that will allow the place of complaint to quieten. And in that process, something about my understanding of what being kind means and what support means and what, um, yeah, what my part in the original conflict was, that I can let go. It's, it's lovely having a body that um, no longer complains to me all the time it's 
it's, it's lovely having a body that is my happy place, my go-to place for when I want to feel good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky that, 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 that I've got that now. It's the opposite of what I used to have. Um, but it's more than that. I think that the physical body, even though it's kind of considered as low down in the sort of frequency level of what's, what's uh, important in terms of um, personal development, I think that the body itself is kind of more, is more connected to, I'll talk about me so, I don't, so I'm not imposing on anything. I think that my body is more connected to my essential self, who I am without programming, without my history, you know, who I would be <clears throat> in a, uh, without complications in life. My body is more connected to, to my soul than my mind is. My, my mind, and I'm, by my mind, I'm talking about my personality, my, my intellect, the binary thinking that is looking for right and wrong, good and bad, all the rest of it. These are all functions of um, what makes me feel safe, what makes me feel um, valued as a human being. Uh, ego. Ego matters. But when I'm in total communion with my body, none of that exists. The past isn't there, the future isn't there. I, I am there in this moment, in this direct relationship to what is. And the experience is so expansive compared to normal thinking. It's so expansive and it's so three-dimensional that it can give me a space to see difficulties in context, you know? Um, it's broader, it, it's like, um, uh, it's peripheral vision as opposed to staring at something. It's the pattern of a sunset rather than working out the frequencies of light. It's more to do with life, real life, you know? Anyway, <laughs> um, I think the body is a, is a sacred place that is totally connected to the true nature of reality. And um, over, the, over millennia it's been sort of vilified as this low frequency thing that needs dealing with. And um, that needs to change because uh, if, if, I could get, if I could get the world leaders to work in this way, in their bodies, we wouldn't have the same sort of bullshit going on. We really wouldn't. No. Anyway, that's my stuff. Gone off on one a bit today. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, I hope that was all right. Um, I suppose we had a bit of a leg stretch. Let's see uh, what I've got coming up to today. I've got my classes: uh, eleven thirty, six thirty. The seventy-five minute classes now, gentle, guided class for everyone, uh, all, all levels from absolute beginner to seasoned teacher. Um, everyone will find some value if you want to join. I think the, the live places for today's classes are full, but you can always get um, a half price view only place and um, some people prefer it because you know, um, I'm not there to pick anything up, but um, and, you know you get the space to work it out for yourself. Um, yeah, so that's later today, 11.30 and 6.30 p.m. And I have another one on um, Wednesdays. Yeah, so another one tomorrow, 11 a.m., 75 minutes, an hour's yoga and 15 minutes um, relaxation, meditation at the end. So that's uh, today and tomorrow. Thursday evening, uh, last chance to join. I think there's one place on my... Uh, core intelligence course. It's, um, a, a C, it's a CPD course for, for dedicated body workers, teachers, practitioners, that sort of thing. Um, you don't have to be a body worker, but uh, you, you need to be, uh, what's the word, uh, enthusiastically, enthusiastically committed to the journey. And um, 
Yes, we've had uh, two introductory workshops um, to join the co course live, and there's, uh, which means you can turn up for the sessions. Um, there's one interactive place. There's, uh, you can always, again, you can book the non-interactive place. It's cheaper. Um, the, the CFD courses, uh, when I'm running them live, come with three one-to-one -one support sessions that go with it, so it can help iron out um, any particular issues. It's an intensive course over six weeks, and uh, so, yeah, so it starts tonight. Uh, not tonight, sorry, Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Yes, and if you can't, if you can't make it for that time and you want to take part in the live thing, you can. Um, you can you can still book it and follow the recordings and take your one-to-ones, you see. So um, that's an option. Then uh, this Saturday, my Saturday uh, morning retreats, uh, they're, they're proving very popular. Uh, really nice two-hour kind of workshoppy thing where I take you through a flow of sorts, but with a, with a theme. Last week was um, how to open up hips in reality rather than trying to stretch the poor things. Um, how to be kind to hips essentially in the base of the spine. And it was a really good session. Um, it, you get that, that's recorded as well. And um, you can get access to that, to that just by dropping in. It's, it's uh, just uh, 20 pounds for that. Um, I'm still running things very cheaply. Um, so you can get a live place on that, I believe. And again, half price for view only. The following Saturday, I won't be doing a my, my morning uh, retreat workshop. The following Saturday, I'm doing um, a, an official British Wheel CPD, um, Continued Professional Development Day, um, for the British Wheel. And it's, it's worth five points, apparently, if you're a British Wheel member. And it's on, uh, the title is Change Pro change perspective transform practice and it's all about um well uh, the the thing the, the pitch that i that i set it for to that i thought might appeal to um long-term teachers was uh, looking at patanjali's sutras um, particularly the one around fixed mental impressions i don't, I don't know if you know but um, there's a sort of list of what lisa yoga um, essentially the first one is it, as in yoga is now. <laughs> uh, and then it goes on to say it happens when you can get the mind to become still. Um, and th then it goes on to de defining what, uh, uh, other, at other times, you know, uh, we are the movements of the mind. And this is what I was talking about when I was talking about my yoga. Uh, this sort of separation from personality, you see. Um, but uh, at other times, uh, the witness identifies with the movements of the mind, which is, um, uh, but, but those movements are either useful or not. And uh, he goes on to list all the, all, uh, all the not useful movements of the mind, one of them being fixed mental impressions. And, oh my God, uh, fixed mental impressions is such a problem in yoga. Uh, in that we have a fixed idea of what will work and then we stick to it, come what may, despite the evidence that it doesn't. <laughs> and, um, and, we, uh, and we don't even change the way we're thinking about it. Now, absolute definition, definition of madness, you know, keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing a whole day workshop on that uh, um, on Saturday 25th of April. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. with breaks. Um, we'll probably have a proper hours break at lunch or so. Um, and yes, anyone can book for it. Uh, but, um, but if you're a member of the British Wheel, um, Yoga Scotland, or, or the IYN, I've put up a code. Uh, I might as well just put it up here, actually, and uh, everyone can get the discount. <laughs> But um, it, it, uh, you can get a code to get a fiver off. So with the fiver off, it's £30 for a whole day, a whole day's workshop, and, and that's a, a live and interactive place. Or £20 if you want to be in the back row uh, just watching. So that's on uh, Saturday 25th of April, 
be an interesting workshop. Um, it won't. It won't just. It, it could be practical. I, I don't. I don't just talk about stuff. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, it'll be a practical application of what it means. Change your mind, transforming practice. So feel free to book on that. And um, the the code for that to give you a fiver off is Joe J O dash B W Y British Will Yoga. So and Joe jo was the rep that booked it for me. So. Um, J-O dash B-W-Y will give you a fiver off to book that, okay? Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm sure we've got other stuff. You can always uh, book a free one-to-one -one with me, a 15-minute session, you can uh, initial consultation. If you want some help with something specifically, um, my, I'm getting more and more gold members now, which means they come for free to my <coughs> weekly classes and my Saturday retreats. Uh, if I get to um, critical mass with that, then um, I'll have to close gold membership uh, because there's only a certain number of um, places on, on classes that I can uh, offer. Um, uh, I th I, yes, I'll, have, I'll probably need to close gold membership. So if you, if you want to get the bargain rate um, for my classes and workshops, you probably need to sign up soon. Uh, otherwise, yeah, just keep dropping in. You can always get a, a, a view-only place on things, and it's half price. So, okay, um, I think that'll do. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that'll do. I've waffled on long enough. So this is me signing off. I'm Mark J Aquaviva uh, of the Aquaviva Method. Um, signing off until same place, same pl same time next week. Lots of love to you all. Bye. Bye now. Let me just uh, find the thing. There it is. Lots of love. Bye.